So this might be a silly question, but should store-bought cheese made from pasteurized milk be avoided with the same vigor or vigor? Some people claim you should avoid drinking pasteurized milk. So well, like cheddar cheese versus raw yeah, milk, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, let's put it this way. Raw milk or raw dairy is going to be way better. In terms of the micronutrient profile, you're going to get far more. You'll get vitamin C. You'll get more B vitamins. You'll minerals. No difference, you know, uh, but depends. Mineral loss depends on the, the way you process the stuff rather than anything else or the way you store it, the way you deal with it or whatever. So you're not going to get much mineral loss um, either way. Uh, now, the other component is not only pasteurization has an effect on a certain types of, you know, peptides as well, but also has a certain type of an effect on also the fatty acids um, as well. Can slightly um, cause a bit of, it to the poofer ones, a bit of damage there, but not a lot. It's very minuscule. We're talking about trace levels, so nothing really to heavily worry about. But to be complete, we need to mention this. The other part is the worst part of, um, you know, the general, you could say, store milk is the, uh, you know, when things, you know, when we do, you know, homogenization and it's not really the um the the protein structures that i'm worried about it's the fatty acids that they're they're breaking up the what what it, i call the food matrix of the fatty acids and by doing that they're actually leaving the vulnerability to the MUFAs and poofers for higher oxidation to happen now, obviously, because dairy is primarily saturated and has much less MUFA and PUFA, again, it's just in the trace amounts, but slightly more than just the pasteurization. Now, in a low carbohydrate state where you've got intracellular antioxidants that we talked about before, upregulated, can it manage this amount? Yes. But is it, but do you? You know, you lose some of the micronutrient and some of the benefits like lactoferrin. Now, lactoferrin is really important. It helps with um, in the gut as well, but elsewhere, you know, it increases interferon, which is part of the immune system. So it helps that part. So it's been used for years and years by old doctors in the past um, to help people heal their guts and stuff like that. But at the same time, for um, dairy is a good source also of uh, this type of amino acids that enhance protein synthesis. So generally speaking, I do encourage people um, to use it. It has higher bio um, in in terms of bioavailability than even meat. It's equal to that of um, eggs in that regard. So eggs and dairy in that. Uh, have those um, features. It's a reason why a lot of bodybuilders have used it in the past. And also you can get uh, liquid um, source. Uh, dairy, you can get dairy down your system in greater amounts, <laughs> some people think. It, it it varies in that regard. So I know a lot of the old bodybuilders used to use a, a lot of the dairy powders and a lot of the dairy, uh, you know, and egg powders and stuff like that to try and get more um, aminos in and stuff like that. So, yeah, it can be used in that regard um, as well. But I wouldn't go, you know, if that's all you can afford, pasteurized, it's still going to be better than carbs, you know? So starches and fruit and stuff like that, it's going to be a hell of a lot better on the deuterium side as well on, you know, just the general um, fatty acid profile and many other things. So in my personal opinion um it trumps those other foods yeah i like that good thing i drink a lot of dairy then and i aim to get raw if i can so mm. I'm, mm. I'm glad about that one i can't be mm. um shot down yeah. for that one. i think another thing is people are concerned um who are doing low carb in particular they're, they're concerned even though they may do low grade ketosis type they're concerned about you know dropping out of ketosis well you know two glasses of milk Usually you're talking about, you know, 250 um, uh, mils of uh, liquid, and that's going to give you, let's say, it's around 
the raw milk is about three point eight that I have, but let's say it's about about four ish um, mm. in that, that regard. You're looking at about ten plus grams, um, two glasses of milk, twenty plus grams. You're still in ketosis at below twenty five grams, and if you're a big person, um, you could double that to a litre of milk a day. You'd still be below the fifty grams, mm. so you'd still be in low grade ketosis. So, you know, people argue that it's going to affect, you know, your low carbohydrate state is a bit, you know, ridiculous to say the least. And the Messiah yeah. see that. I mean, I know Mary Ruddock, um, when I've interviewed her, she did um, a lot of, she stayed with the Messiah and actually lived with them for a period of time, seeing how they ate and what they didn't. And she had taken a lot of blood glucose and ketone sticks with her to measure these people and, and notice that they were in this low grade um, level, both the women, the men and the children. So it was interesting. So they weren't in a completely severely catabolic state, but they weren't in a severely anabolic state, but they still had good muscular skeletal tone because they were eating enough animal foods. As I said earlier, Protein synthesis is driven by leucine primarily, signaling. So you only need a small amount of insulin signaling. You know, this whole thing that, you know, unless you want to grow adipose tissue, that's when you need the other stuff. But, you know, the body's not stupid. It knows how to do it. Otherwise, these tribal people would be wasting away, not building muscle. Yeah. That's true. They're quite dense looking people as well. Exactly. I'd like to get yeah. in a fight with them. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it, it's ridiculous. It's just ignorant Westerners that have been brainwashed by um, carb centric bro science. Yeah, completely agree.